All right. So uh, let's get this started. Um, this is a BBC interview with Sam Harris on racism. He talks a lot about Black Lives Matter and stuff like that. Um, I listened to it while I was in the shower one day, and I just had to respond to it. I, and uh, decided, why not do it on stream? Um, so here we go. To turn to perhaps one of the most contentious debates, frankly, tearing America apart right now, that is race and racism and how to respond to what many people appears to be the clear evidence of discrimination at every level in American society, including policing and the justice system. You have spoken out against Black Lives Matter. You seem to regard it as a form of identity politics, which you say is a poison, a poison in America today. Why do you say that? Well, first, let me say that I, I acknowledge that racism is still a, a tremendous problem in certain parts of American society and, and you know, globally, uh, and that racism is is something that we absolutely have to oppose and and criticize. And I mean, you know, it is a problem for which there is a remedy, and we have been you know, pursuing this remedy for for many many decades in the U.S. But we've made a lot of progress, right? And we're now living at a moment where we are having a kind of uh, moral panic advertised to us. And, and Black Lives Matter is, is, is one of the, the names of this movement and one of the, you know, the, the groups, you know, it's a very loose group, but it's one of the groups that is, is um, uh, making the most noise on this topic at the moment. And it, it's as though we have made no progress. It's as though this moment in American history it exemplifies the worst uh, symptoms of racism, and uh, that. Okay, so no one in Black Lives Matter, nobody who is protesting for racial justice, it nobody thinks that right now in this moment is the worst moment in racial history. I don't know why he's making that claim. That is insane. Um, I I just I it, that doesn't make sense to me. You might be able to find somebody on Twitter that would make that claim, but nobody relevant makes that claim. That's quite delusional. I mean, obviously, we have made... It's quite delusional that you think that that is, like, what people think. ...made a tremendous amount of progress. Obviously, this is one of the least racist moments in human history, uh, generally, globally, and in, in American history, and... Um, but 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 it, it, can, may I stop you yeah, to, just please. to point out that uh, yeah. the obvious that you sit with me we're both you know let's be honest white uh, middle class comfortable uh, educated people who represent perhaps the the dominant uh, grouping in our respective societies and and who are you in the end to tell black Americans how they should feel right now because so many of them look around the reality of their own lives their children's lives and see a system which is systemically racist not least when it comes to the police and they feel it is their right and their duty to express a level of anger frustration and an unwillingness to accept that which is surely understandable well it's in part understandable i mean what is really understandable is that there is a lot of misinformation and misunderstanding being amplified. I mean, so, so if you're going to be outraged over the uh, racist behavior of racist cops or the racist consequences of systems that, that promulgate racism, whether there's any actual living racists around to, to uh, implement those systems. Um, but it's so not a choice, is it? We, we are. See... I feel like this guy, he understands the correct way of thinking about this, but then he goes off on tangents and most of his focus will be on things that just are the complete antithesis of what he was just now saying. It, it, it doesn't make sense to me. You'll, you'll see later in the video what I mean.
Uh, we are surely duty bound to be no, of course. outraged I, 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 by that. I'm, I'm as concerned and as outraged as, as anyone is about those things, but I'm doubly or additionally concerned that we not find racists where they don't exist, right? That we, if, if you're going to find racists everywhere, you're, you're, you're going to find the real racists nowhere, right? I mean, you're, you're, and you're going to do an immense, immense harm uh, in the process. Uh, and so to take, you know, the, the variable of police violence is very important. If you're going to worry about uh, the consequences of racism and the way it's causing uh, you know, black men preferentially to get shot and killed in, in America, you have to find out whether, in fact, that's happening, right? Whether, in fact, black men are being shot in greater numbers, right, in proportion to uh, the, the numbers of encounters they have with police officers and whether they're it does not matter if black people are getting shot less or more than other races per encounter, in my opinion. Because black Americans get harassed by the police more often. So here's, here's what I mean by that. If there's going to be a scuffle with the police, it's probably because the police are trying to arrest you. It's probably not because the police have stopped you to harass you on the, um, on the road, or it's probably not going to be because the police stopped you on the streets to ask a few questions and you're, you weren't doing anything wrong. Um, black Americans have much more of those types of encounters than other races do which means that if you are counting the amount that black americans are shot per encounter those little bitty harassments kind of dilute the encounter pool for black americans if a police officer is stopping a white person um, it is probably for something m much more egregious than a black person. Um, not, not to say that police officers don't harass white people. Police officers don't pull over white people just for speeding and stuff like that. It just happens much more often for black Americans than it does white Americans. There are studies that prove this. Um, which means that the, just the, the encounter pool for black Americans are much more diluted with small nonsensical things um, that are less likely to turn into a situation to where police officers are going to have to defend themselves with lethal force than um, or at least feel threatened enough to defend themselves with lethal force whether justifiably or not than some, uh, white Americans would. Um, that's just my opinion on the statistics. I think that Sam Harris is uh, really using bad statistics in this instance when he says these things. Whether they're, if they're having more encounters with police officers per capita, there's any explanation for that other than racism, right? The, my concern currently in America is that any disparity you find, whether it's with respect to police violence or employment or wealth or any any variable of interest and of great social importance, currently on the left, anywhere you go left of center politically, the only explanation that is acceptable, and this really does have the, the kind of, the quality of a kind of blasphemy test in a religion, the only explanation that is that is acceptable at this moment is white racism or... It is not white racism. It's systematic racism that causes these things. And yes, systematic racism absolutely has a hand, a huge hand, in the disparities you see when it comes to police encounters with black community, uh, black community's lack of wealth when compared to the white community. Um, what, what was the other thing that he said? Uh, I, I forgot what the other thing, but I remember it, it was systematic racism certainly has a hand in in and the disparities you see between the black and white communities uh, when it comes to every single one of those things that he listed. I don't understand. Um, it's not white racism. We aren't saying that, oh, white people hate black people, so we took their wealth. It, it, it... <sighs> Anyways.
or, or systemic racism. Now, on the point of police violence, it just so happens that the only data we have suggest that while, while African Americans have more encounters with the police, uh, and there's, there, you know, I think there are obvious reasons for that, um, and they're actually, in fact, roughed up by the police more than, than white Americans are. I like how he just kind of uh, brushes that off. They, they're roughed up more than um, white Americans are by the police. Um, as if police brutality isn't a big part of the BLM movement and the people who are speaking out against a uh, racist justice system. Um, they're not killed more. In fact, they're killed less than, than, than white Americans are per encounter, which is to say that if you come under the attention of the police in America, and uh, they draw their guns on you, uh, your chances of being shot appear to be slightly higher if you're white at the but, moment. But, but, now that you can't measure that unless you have um, numbers for how often a white person gets shot after a dr gun is drawn compared to how often a black person gets shot after a gun is drawn. Um, you can't measure that simply by the number of encounters the black community has with police compared to the white community and how many of those people end up dying by police brutality, police force. And hang on, it breaks it, everyone's expectations. This is fascinating because it gets to the heart of your intellectual approach to lots of things. You know, you are, I think, a self-proclaimed rationalist. You say that you are determined to be driven by the evidence, by data, by the science, not by emotion and still less by things like religion or any other faith-based knowledge uh, uh, belief system so so evidence matters but if you look across the piece it's you've alighted on one piece of evidence but surely there's an overwhelming tract of evidence about incarceration rates what happens to black kids in schools what happens to black people in employment how many jobless black people there are there is clearly a story in america of systemic discrimination which black people are saying right now they will no longer tolerate without expressing their anger and when you make the point you've just made it it does sound to some like you're, you're sort of lacking a level of compassion or, or even emotional intelligence or ability to empathize with the situation of the other well, well no the, the well, first of all it shouldn't because i'm concerned about the the real suffering of real people but the, we have to acknowledge that we compound that suffering when we give false notions about its actual causes right so if you're going to look at uh, and again I, and and i'm you know i'm on record every time i touch this topic acknowledging that uh, we still need criminal justice reform, and the war on drugs in, in the United States in particular has been a disaster, and it's especially been a disaster for the black community. All of those things uh, should go without saying, and, and there are changes that need to be made there. But if you're going to, again, if you're going to, to ascribe the status quo across the board, the fact that, that um, uh, there's the kind of wealth inequality and inequality with respect to cr crime and violence I in American society that breaks along racial lines. If you're going to ascribe that to white racism or... Again, nobody's subscribing it to white racism. We're subscribing it to systematic racism. Or white race or policies that white, that white people are not changing because they advantage them, right? you will continually stumble upon errors of great consequence, right? It is simply not the case that there are white racists uh, with their racism producing the level of violence we see in the black community in the inner city, in a place like Chicago. The point that many black... I don't understand what he meant by that. There aren't white racism in the inner cities producing the the violence that black people produce that 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 statement does just doesn't make sense to me i i'm not sure what he meant by that um is he trying to say that black communities in the inner city of chicago are more violent than the white races are i i, I don't know it it's that's, that's a weird one for me black americans are making right now and i'm going to quote to you uh, the words of just one. His sincere Carabo, who, who works as the social justice coordinator at the American Humanist Association, he's addressed your 
uh, podcasts on this issue, your interviews with other people on this issue, and he says, Sam Harris's definition of racism places an underlying emphasis on intention, and he says that's how Sam Harris defines the number of white people who are racist as a tiny, tiny minority. However, says Mr. Carabo, when discussing racism, it is important to remember it isn't about intent, it's about impact, and in that sense, it involves a far greater proportion of the white community. Well, as stated, I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that. Intention isn't the only thing that matters, obviously. If there so he says this, and I, I, I believe I'm right in saying this, just, just wait until his next statement. There are policies that in effect create racist outcomes, whether anyone intends it or not, we should figure out what those policies are and we should change them, right? So that's, you know, that is what people tend to mean by systemic race, racism or institutional racism. And I'm, I'm completely on board with the project of discovering that and correcting for it, right? But what we- which, which is what everybody who actually matters in this discussion um, wants. We have now in American society are allegations of racism or, or uh, the experience that people are having, millions of people are having simultaneously of watching a video of, let's say, a police shooting. You know, uh, you know, in, in the prototypical case, it'll be a you know white cop shooting a. Black yeah, we don't have to imagine suspect. it, Sam. We 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 see it. We it's, right now we're watching over and over Jacob Blake being shot in Wisconsin. You know, we we don't have to use our imagination. I would tell you that 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 video is not evidence in and of itself. That video is not evidence of racism, right? You can be you can see videos of white people being shot in precisely the same circumstances and. Um, I mean, we have a massive problem of guns in our society. We have a massive problem of, of poorly trained cops. I mean, that that video in particular uh, evinced several of these problems. One is that well, that when someone well, rushes to their car uh, in defiance of police commands and opens the door and reaches in, in American society, unlike in the UK, it is only rational for the cops to assume that that person is retrieving a gun so he can turn around and start shooting cops. Um. Okay, so two things. So notice that he's like, oh yeah, I agree. We need to take care of the systematic problems that lead to racist outcomes in America. But then he goes and turns around and just focuses on this idea that people are going around saying that uh, white racism is the reason why all of these problems are happening in the, in the black community. That it's people with racial intent that are causing these problems and that's just not what people are talking about uh, most people are talking about systematic racism um and the second thing is he's about to do the whole oh well he could have been reaching for a gun thing um when it comes to the jacob blake situation um i don't want our police force to be so poorly trained that anytime somebody reaches their hands into an area where they could possibly have a gun, the police just unload seven bullets in the back. Like, that's not the type of police that we should be having going, roaming our streets and acting the government's monopoly on, of violence on us. That's just not, that's not justifiable. Yes, he could have been reaching for a gun, but until until you know for sure he is reaching for the gun, you the police officer needs to show restraint in pulling that trigger. Uh, fucking fucking uh, Kyle Rittenhouse, a 17-year-old boy, showed more restraint in the people he shot in Kenosha than that cop did on the uh, on duty while dealing with the uh, with Jacob Blake. Jacob Blake most likely was not reaching for a weapon. Given everything we know about that situation, he was not reaching for the knife that he had in his car. Given everything that we know about that situation, it is more logical to assume that he was just trying to get to his car so he can get away so that that policeman could not serve the arrest warrant that was out on him. He had three, three kids in the back of his car. Why would he try and start a physical altercation with a policeman while he had his kids in the car. It just doesn't follow. Um, 
Anyways, I think that's the end of the video. In the face, which, uh, which happens, right? And every cop knows this. To move on from race to religion. Yeah, so... Uh, I, I did a, a live stream of this video one other time with my friend who is a um, Sam Harris fan. Um, but he is mostly a fan of what Sam Harris has to say about uh, Muslims, and I don't know much about that topic. Uh, but him and I both agree that Sam Harris is way out of his depths when it comes to this topic. I, I don't know what he's doing commenting on this, um, but he definitely is way out of his depths, um, in my opinion. And I'm not saying that I'm an expert, but I know enough to know that the things that Sam Harris was saying was nonsensical.